Merry Christmas. Before we start streaming, Donna Lewis is not here this morning, so if you would please remember to sign the card for her. It might not be big enough because I didn't know she was going to be here. I was going to get two of them. But anyway, there is a card going around. Who has it? It's at the door right now, so please... Find me, find the card, try to sign it while she's not here. It'd be perfect. We're not streaming yet, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Hi, good morning church. Welcome to Valonia United Methodist Church. We are a church dedicated to loving our community as we are through words, actions, and presence. I'm Pastor Chad Hornsby and we're so glad to have you here with us for worship this morning. We have a couple of announcements to keep in mind. First, the Church Family Life is having a potato bar fundraiser on Sunday, December 31st after worship. Uh, please see Megan Johnson after worship today to sign up and prepay for your meals. Uh, reminder, Youth Child Care fundra Evening Fundraiser is tonight from 1 to 5. Uh, so please see Andrea to sign up for that. Also, tonight is the Luminary Walk being held, or beginning with hot cocoa and cookies at 5 in the sanctuary. Tours will be at 515, 530, and 545. 
Also, if you'd like to take a Christmas Eve candlelight service, this yard sign home um, to place in your yard. They're in the back hall of the sanctuary, so take one of those, and we hope to see you on Christmas Eve. Let us open our worship in prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for this time. Attune our hearts to you as we begin our worship to celebrate the hope, peace, joy, and love we feel this season. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, let us join together in our call to worship as printed in your bulletin and on the screen. Come, come into the place where God listens, where you need no money, no status, no fine clothes. Come as you are, broken, sick, well. Come to sing, come to hear, come and be ready. We are here. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand and join us?
We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Can you hear me? All right. If you come forward, we're going to lead you guys in the third verse of the Advent Candle song. Trip. Theo and Ty, you've been recruited. Being the child of director you get voluntold all right join in this time. Cash, if I see you shaking your head next week, I'm going to mic you directly. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay. 
verse 3. Light the Advent candles, weeping of heavenly harmony, angels singing peace on earth, at the blessed Savior's birth, candle, candle, burning bright, shining in the cold. Lovely children, thank you. Don't go anywhere though, we've got a children's no, moment. Maddie, you've got the children's Good morning. Okay, so great job, everybody. I think Pastor Chad sounded good too, huh? Okay, so today we're going to use the message. So today we're going to use the message from Isaiah to understand our job as Christians and how it can make us joyful in God's word. So this is kind of a hard question, but I'm going to see if anybody knows. So, does anyone know what a mission statement is? That's okay. It's hard. So, it's actually kind of easy to understand. It's just a simple message that tells the world who you are and what you want to do. So, Ty's going to read our mission statement as our church. So, the pink highlights. Loving our community as we are through words, actions, and presence. Okay, so as a church, we're saying that we want to help Valonia through our actions and we want to serve our community. So, it's just a simple way of saying, this is how we're going to love God. So, why are we even talking about mission statements this morning? So, as we look at Isaiah, it is... The passage from Isaiah is actually Jesus' mission statement. So, he says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So, we're going to practice saying some mission statements that help us remember our job as disciples. Okay, so if y'all can remember, repeat after me, okay? Be kind to everyone and make friends with people who are lonely. Be kind to everyone and make friends with people who are lonely. So that's a mission statement about what we want to do every day. So let's practice another one. Spread joy and tell people about the love of Jesus. Spread joy and tell people about the love of Jesus. So as today's candle is pink, we are celebrating the gift of joy. As we practice saying what our purpose is in the mission statements, we have the impact we want to have an impact on the world. We should feel joyful. Okay, say a prayer with me. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of joy and impacting the world through your name. Thank you for the children of the church that teach us to love you in a new way. Amen.
please join us for our congregational prayer, which is printed in your bulletin and on the screen. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet the joy of the coming Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from John chapter 1. Please rise, rise for the reading of the gospel. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but he confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one of, one of whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. May the Lord God add blessing to the reading and hearing of the scripture. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. You know, they say that the older you get, the younger everyone else in church looks, but Zeta J might be the youngest sound tech I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, so this week has kind of been a strange week, um, and it keeps getting stranger, because while I've written this sermon like four times, um, I was struck to not do it any of those ways. So we're going to see where this goes this morning. <laughs> um, let's start with prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing unto you. Amen. So one of the things I decided when I became a pastor and was doing this full time is that I was going to be really intentional about watching the news. In seminary, I frequently said, no, I do not need any more bad news today. I will not be watching the news. But now I've made it intentional that at least four days of the week, I sit down while I drink my coffee and I catch up on the news. I find that it's often just so hard to take in everything. They start every night with breaking news, but the breaking news turns out to be the same thing it was yesterday and the day before. We live in a world in strife. We live in a world where the news is so often something horrible. Whether it's another war has broken out, a war is about to break out, someone has lost a loved one, or another shooting. Research has been gone on that's shown that we have more access to information than any of our ancestors have ever before. We have a, the ability to see a lot more than our ancestors have seen. And at the same time, we're seeing increasing rates of anxiety and depression. People my age and younger are saying that they feel more overwhelmed because they constantly see this stream of bad news. What do we do with this? And how much more strange is it that we think about bad news on a day where we light a candle in celebration of joy. Our second scripture this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, and um, I'm going to read from the screen up here. 
ch- it's chapter 61. So, the spirit of the Lord of God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastation of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their their recompense and I will make them an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. For he has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as the garden causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Some of that might have sounded familiar. If you're a good Methodist, you heard part of the great thanksgiving in that, our communion liturgy. This is the text that we base, or well, that Jesus based some of his words that we then remind ourselves of every time we take communion. Another thing that came to my mind as I was reading Isaiah this week was one of my favorite Christmas movies. So they say every family has one Christmas movie. My family's Christmas movie is Christmas Vacation. We love Christmas Vacation because the one thing about Christmas Vacation and while that makes it such a great movie is how much Clark Griswold just wants his family to have the best Christmas ever. He prepares everything, he does everything right in his mind and the only thing he's waiting on is news of his Christmas bonus coming in. He starts making plans to put in a pool in the backyard, and throughout the movie we see him daydreaming about the day that he finally gets to accomplish this. And the movie kind of culminates in the third act with Clark receiving a letter from work. It's the Christmas bonus he's been waiting on for so long. And it turns out to be a subscription to the Jelly of the Month Club. Which, as Cousin Eddie points out, is the gift that keeps on giving, but it's not quite the news Clark was looking for. This leads to a rather hilarious outburst. And eventually, through some antics with Cousin Eddie, Clark does end up getting his Christmas bonus, plus a little extra. But he's looking for good news. Something that will get him to the place he wants to be this Christmas. How interesting is it that in the Gospel of John's text for today, John doesn't come out with new news. John comes out with old news and good news. This text is one that was written at the time when the Israelites are in the Babylonian captivity. They've been pulled out of Jerusalem and conquered and made to live in this foreign land away from what is home for them. When Isaiah preaches about binding up the wounded by about taking care of the brokenhearted, freeing the oppressed, 
Isaiah's talking to those people that's around him. They're hearing this hopeful message for the first time. And yet it's something that as we get to the Gospel of John, is still a resonant text. And that might be explained a little better through the history of the Gospel of John. So we have four Gospels in the Bible that were decided these are the four that um, most likely came from apostles. John is the latest of these Gospels. Mark was written first, and it was written right after Paul wrote all of his letters. By the way, our New Testament is wildly out of order, um, in the order that they were written. And John is actually one of the last books written. In fact, by the time John is written in 90 AD, most of the apostles are dead. At this point, the second generation of Christianity is coming in. They're actually just now starting to be a separate religion from Judaism. We might wonder what caused that split. What was the thing that incited Christians and Christians and Jews to split up? Well, the Jewish people are the only people in human history to throw off the Romans. They led a successful rebellion and kicked the Romans out of Judea, which is really impressive, even though it only lasted for about a year. Well, when Rome came back in and reclaimed Judea, they also decided that they were going to kick all of the Jews out of Rome. And this starts a sibling rivalry between Christians and Jews that kind of continues to this day in a form of a lot of anti-Jewish hate. You see, John is trying to make very clear to Roman readers that he is not a Jewish person. He is Christian, and they're separate. This is why when we read the Gospel of John, we see these pointed remarks about the Jews. This is something we've got to be careful about as we're reading today, especially with all the anti-Semitism going on. Because at the end of the day, we're very close to our Jewish neighbors. But at this time, Christians were trying to set themselves apart. So why does John rely on old news? I think it's simple. We forget things. We forget that God is here and God is coming to proclaim something for us. We forget what the true meaning of some things are and that we forget how to have joy amongst those things. The other movie that kind of comes to mind is um, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You see, the Grinch sets out and he has this grand plan of what he's going to do because he hates Christmas. It's annoying and people are very loud. And so he decides that I know just what I'll do. I'll go down and I'll steal everything from them. Well, I think this is something that could be good for us to do and strip back what Christmas has become with all of the fancy commercials and the presents and all of the glitz and glamour that tells us to buy, 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 but not to think about the reason why we're even having Christmas in the first place. What the Grinch finds out at the end of the book, the movie, however you choose to read or watch the Grinch, is that Christmas isn't necessarily about the gifts, it's not about the things involved, but it's about the spirit that comes with it. The Grinch wakes up or hears the sun rising and hears singing. He hears the joy coming from Whoville as what they were really celebrating all along was the togetherness. I think that's a really powerful image for us today. And it gets us from this news that we have to share to why it brings us joy. You know, it doesn't take long of watching the news to see that there's a lot going on in the world that's not joyful. There's a lot of struggle and there's a lot of suffering for a lot of people who frankly don't deserve it. And I think that one of the best ways to understand what it means to be a Christian is to recognize what Latin American women theologians have described as the theology of joy or the theology of festival or fiesta is what they call it. You see, in Latin American cultures, there is a strong sense that there's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of things going wrong in life, but nonetheless, we still need to come together and celebrate. 
Because in some ways, us coming together and saying that we can still have joy even though the world around us is suffering and that there's struggle in the world shows us a piece of the new creation. And even for some people, showing joy in the face of struggle becomes a kind of protest against ways that people want to put them down. I think this is a beautiful image and something that has meant a lot to me since I learned about it. To learn to embrace joy even when there's sorrow, but not to just ignore the sorrows, but to take time to go and to feel joy, to refill ourselves so that when we face the hard times, it's not so hard. I think this is one of the reasons we come to worship so often. This is the good news for today. It's old news, too. It's that God chose to come and live amongst us, not because God necessarily had to, but because God loves us. God wanted to show us the joy and the life that could come from living the way Jesus did. And so... God became one of us. You know, I think it's really reductionist to say that God became in flesh so that we could all get into heaven. Frankly, an all-powerful God could have done that without going through all the trouble. But God experienced joy and decided that it'd be a wonderful thing to live amongst creation. And those that got to experience that probably think it's a very joyful thing, too. This week, I want to encourage you not to just ignore the bad things that are going on in the world, but to find a way to see joy in the world, too. We can get really bogged down in all that is wrong, but it's important that we also keep in mind what is right, because that's what ultimately nourishes us so that we can keep on living in the world and working towards the new creation. May it be so. It's fine. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let us affirm our faith that is written in the Old and New Testament. Please stand fable and join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, And on the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we join together and share the concerns and the joys that are on our heart. First, we want to lift up Steve and Karen Williams, who lost their 24-year-old son, Jackson, to our friends of Birdie. We also want to lift up Birdie, who is at home sick this morning. We want to lift up, continue to lift up all those who have been sick, the Oversee, Roberts, and Cure families as well. We also come together to celebrate, and one of the things we celebrate this morning is that Tiffany Yarborough's mom, Shirley Beck, is going on her first cruise ever, and she and her siblings will be embarking on Monday 
the South Caribbean. So prayers for safe journeys and joy. Alice Watson, got, who was baptized last weekend, was accepted into two colleges this week. And also we want to celebrate the wonderful Women's Luncheon and give praise that Miss Sue is back with us this morning. At this time, I invite you to pray individually for the things that are on your heart. You can do so in your seats or you can come to the altar and kneel or in whatever way feels more comfortable for you. Let us pray this time in silence. For over 2,000 years, Advent, God, your blessings have been flowing. A river of grace and love and mercy has flowed through the desert of our lives, watering our souls and satisfying our thirst. For 2,000 years and more, we have recognized your Emmanuel presence, bringing life and light to your world. Many of us have experienced the birth, the miracle of rebirth and recreation. And so once again at this Advent season, we sing our Thanksgiving anthems. But in the midst of our celebrations, dear God, we have to admit that after 2,000 years, the curse can still be found. Our lands are still infested with the thorns of injustice and unrighteousness. The briars of hatred and discrimination despoil our social and spiritual environment. In our frustration and irritation, we cry out, no more. Grant us the wisdom and the courage to make up no more a reality. Even if the weeds and wheat are to grow together, we pray for the boldness to keep on sowing good seeds. We pray for the courage to confront the enemy with love and compassion until they change from evil to good. In the meantime, healing God, we pray for your children crying in the wilderness of oppression and dehumanization. Help us to listen with you as they cry no more and enough is enough. Help us to share your concern for the suffering and then empower us as we embark on a divine mission of renewal and transformation. Perhaps then our joy will be intensified this Advent season as we celebrate again the glories of your righteousness and the wonder of your love. We pray all this in the name of the one who came and made their dwelling amongst us in the way that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever the ushers would come forward to receive the offering we if you would like to give today to support the ministries and missions of Alonia United Methodist Church you can do so by placing something in the plate or by giving online through our 
website or by PayPal. God has blessed us to be a blessing. How can we hold our gifts of gratitude in the face of such wondrous love? With glad and generous hearts, let us bring our offering to God. Amen. song. It's called Advent Hymn. The words are going to be on the screen. Christ whose glory fills the skies. Christ the Beloved, how wonderful is it that on the third Sunday of Advent, we have a worship service so full of joy. Remember, we don't leave the church. We go out to be the church. May we share this love with all those we encounter this week. Amen.
All right, here I am again. So